So we are going to start on Inkscape's website where you can download the software. And um, either what you can do is you just press on the download button here in the front page. And then you can choose what system you're working with on your computer. So if you're on Mac, you press here. And then it's going to find the newest version for you, which is the 0.92.4. And you can just download it here. Otherwise, you can go under download and you can do the upcoming version. And this is a beta version, which is not completely finished or ready for use, but it is actually quite good to work on. So if you want to try that out instead, feel free. You can just download it from the buttons here. And when you open Inkscape, it's going to look something like this. So what you do when you draw on Inkscape, if you don't have any uh, file to add on, but you just want to draw something yourself, you could, for example, press here and you can make a square. And when you have the square, if you want to adjust the sizes, you can just do it by pulling on the edges. Otherwise, if you want a very specific size, you can also go up here under width, height of the box. And you can say 50 times 50. This controls where on the square here that your model is placed. So we can also say I want it at 100 times 150 or something. Then it's going to be here. But as you can see right now, it is blue. I could also change the color if I want. If I go down here in the bottom and I say I want it to be lime green. Then if I um, right click on it. I can say set stroke and it's going to change the, wait, it did not because I didn't mark it. Here it's going to set the stroke of the box. If I just press once on it, it's going to set the, the fill of the box, but we don't want that. We just want it to be clear and with an outline. So I'm just going to go back and make it blue again. Then if I maybe wanted to combine some different shapes to make something a bit more fun, then I could decide to draw a circle here. And let's say that this circle, I want it to be 25 times 25. And I want it to be placed right here. That's perfect. Maybe I want another one down here as well. Then Inkscape has some uh, very nice functions that you could learn to use. If I hold shift down, I can mark several objects at once. So now I have both the top circle and the square marked. And I go to path up here in the top. And then uh, these ones are very good to remember. For example, the union, what that's going to do is it's going to take the two shapes and combine them without the interior. You see, as I didn't um, mark this one, it's not going to be part of the function I just did. But now that I have it marked, I'm going to mark the other object as well. So now it's all clicked on and I go back to path. And instead of union, I'm going to go with the one called difference. So what that does is pretty much the opposite. So instead of removing what's inside, it keeps only what's inside and removes the outside part of the circle. And now it kind of looks like a brick from a puzzle. Maybe we could make it look even more like that. So I'm going to do whoop, this, I'm going to make it 25 times 25 again, move it a bit up and mark this and union. Then now this is a very nice break from a puzzle that I have here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to makercase.com where we can make the boxes that might help you in your um, prototypes. So we press on the one called basic box, which just has normal square. First thing is we take the units and we go to millimeters here in width, height, depth. You can choose the sizes of it. So you can also see like a 3D model of it moving around, zoom in, zoom out. Maybe I want it to be 150 tall. Then press here and I have a taller box. Then it's going to be on outside diameters or dimensions uh, by default. But if you want to uh, place a lot of different equipment on the inside and you know how big it is, then it might be um, helpful for you to choose the inside dimension so that you're sure that 
let's say your breadboard fills exactly the space so you want to make sure that it can fit inside material thickness i just put it on three millimeters depends on what kind of material you're gonna use open or close box says if the top like the lid here is going to be there or not and edge joints if we go to the finger slots it has these nice little things that you can use to actually just click the sides together if you want and down here you can adjust the size of the fingers when you think it's finished you can press on download box plans and it's going to show you a drawing off the different sides the way it's going to actually be downloaded into your uh, program so you just go down here and you download svg it's gonna jump and when you go into inkscape you can press on this little icon saying import a bitmap or an svg image into this document and when you go here you're gonna have in your downloads so you can see the preview here you have your model and here you don't really press anything you just say okay and you're gonna have it in here and right now it might look like it's all clustered up into one big uh, object but actually what usually happens when you double click them is that you can also move them as separate objects which you can do here so that's very good in case you want to do something funny with any of the sites if you need to like cut off a corner do something like that and um, as you can see this one is red just by default and then I have my puzzle brick here my piece which is blue and uh, the different colors they can actually be used a lot when we come to the actual laser cutting part because the program already works that we use for the laser cutters it can make a hierarchy of different orders in which to, to cut things. So for example, if we have a big plate of HDF or cardboard and we want to cut out the sides of the box and also with the pattern and maybe something else, it might be useful that it cuts out the small piece, which is, let's say it's going to be here. It might be helpful that it cuts this out first, just as a matter of balance and the things not falling apart inside the laser cutter and then you can actually tell it to cut the blue things first and then take the red ones after and what you can also do is let's say you want to have your name on the side then I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger first off it's black so you can make it do something completely different you can set it to maybe engrave the name instead of cutting through or just outlining it without cutting through so you can actually make drawings or, or write a lot of things on your material in the laser cutter without cutting all the way through what we need to do with the text though is that we need to mark it and go under path and then use this function called dynamic offset this one makes sure that it's converted into a vector that the a laser cutter can read or that the programs can read instead of just a specific font from this program so now technically it should be completely good to go what we're gonna do is we're just gonna double check the size of it all so up here it's in millimeters which it is supposed to it's around 30 times 30 centimeters that sounds realistic then we go to file save as and you should have the option to save it as a DXF, a desktop cutting plotter. I'm going with the R14 version here. If you don't have it, maybe because you have an older version of Inkscape, try downloading the newest version and see if it's possible because it's going to make it a lot easier. Otherwise, download it as an SVG and you can use one of the computers in the Fab Lab to, uh, to convert it into a DXF using another program. But it is by far the easiest if you just have it in the DXF right away because then you can save it onto your memory stick and you can just go directly to the laser cutter room and use it. It's going to open this one. You just double check that this one is shipped off and also that your unit is in millimeters again. And other than that, you just say OK and you're good to go.